think of the meaning of the word when you say om namah shivaya you should feel that all the negative duality is being thrown out of you why is it that swami started atirudra mahayagnam in 2006 lingam if you see in hon swami's discourse swami has said is the closest form which connects nirakara with sakara shiva loves only abhishekam and what he loves abhishekam is only water what does it mean namah shivaya namah shivaya prayerful pranams at bhagwan's lotus feet dear swami respected elders dear brothers and sisters at the very outset i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this wonderful opportunity of recapitulating bhagwan's glory bhagwan's interactions with all of us when i was looking back and looking into the life with bhagwan the life that we have led that he has made us lead over the so many years in his presence and with his presence all the while what i found is something that i am very certain is a part and parcel of everyone's journey when we had come to swami not just come to swami fully but just got to know of him god was a distant reality a person to whom you pray a person to whom you fear we pray only when we want some desires to be fulfilled and that was god for me too but then as i lived with bhagwan what he taught was that god is not someone distant not someone who needs to be called upon once in a while but he is the closest of the close like swami puts it in his own words talli kante migula daivambe deggara sannihitindu tandri kante he is the closest even more closer than mother closer and one who understands than father so he made us understand that loving him that loving god is all the essence of life there is nothing else but to love god and that's what i am sure swami has taught each and every one of us that we are gathered here and all of his devotees i think that's the greatest blessing and the fortune that he has given us that we can love god that we know he loves us too this this relationship is something which is the sweetest this relationship is something that's our blessing this is what he he taught through so many so many simple but profound ways how many should i relate how many experiences should i go on if at all we can limit the number of instances of experiences that he has given us it's because we are limited we have been negligent in all the things that he show, showed us and he's showing us that he is with us all along he's in fact what he has led us to is to understand that he is all the time with us listening to every thought and a prayer of ours so i'll start off with one such experience which i will narrate an experience which recently one of my brother an alumni who is working in pune told me this was it seems during his degree time he had he was sitting i could name him also his mahider he was sitting in bhajan and that time bhajan hall swami used to sit for darshan and he didn't recently had lost his mother 
so he was sitting somewhere at the back and as the bhajans were going on he was very back means he couldn't see swami swami was in bhajan hall he was outside just a drop of tear fell from his ear thinking of his mother and feeling are i am losing i am losing her comforting presence i don't have her any more as that thought crossed his mind he suddenly sees up there's a hush in the front of the portico swami has come out of bhajan hall and he walks down gracefully as though he is giving darshan to so many but he comes to this boy and says why are you crying i am your mother that is swami for all of us that swami he listens he listens to every prayer and this has been and is my experience even to this day there is not a single prayer that he does not listen to there is not a single thought need not be prayer it's just a thought and he responds in my 11th standard means how loving he was how he came down to our level to make us understand that we can have a relationship with him that we are not someone different from him he pulled us up to such a level all through his very simple loving and ability to come down to our level like a simple example i'll give you it was during my 11th standard my birthday happened to be in december and that was the year swami's 55th birthday celebrations happened 1980 7980 so that time the birthday boys had a very unique opportunity we could stand inside the old bungalow it was not tri brindavan i was a brindavan student fortunate to be by his grace so we were having that old bungalow where as swami comes down from the staircase we could stand with a garland and offer that garland to him It means garland swami so this was a wonderful opportunity and it so happened in my 12th standard being the 55th birthday of bhagwan swami had come back from parthi after the 55th birthday celebrations world conference so we decided in the hostel that we will have one more celebration of swami's birthday and it so happened that the day of celebration happened to be on my birthday december 9th so the then warden immediately sent word that no darshan for boys in the morning nobody is going to go to mandir we'll make preparations at the hostel and elaborate preparations were made because that was the first time swami said he will come for music program discourse and followed by dinner all three because it was a 55th birthday celebration being done in the hostel prindavan hostel so it was a phenomenal it was a joyous occasion phenomenal opportunity for every one of us but then there was a lurking feeling of a loss some sort of a dejection i am losing the opportunity of garlanding garlanding bhagwan we had had darshan been allowed i could have gone as a birthday boy but anyway being a part of the garden group got involved in all the activities and being a youngster or not a senior member of the hostel did not get any front seats when swami had come so it was all all programs were good it was joyous occasion there was a wonderful music program in the corridor uh, in the quadrangle of the hostel followed by a wonderful dinner it was 9 9:30 by the time swami retired and all along i was somewhere in the hostel enjoying all this but not anywhere near bhagwan even to take a namaskar so that was it was slowly building up i am missing i am missing i am missing the one of op- good opportunity and swami the program got over swami was slowly getting back to mandir the old bungalow and boys rushed back to the mandir and swami as he goes to the staircase room along the bhajan hall 
I thought at least there in the path I could get some good opportunity. But by the time I reached there, being still young, didn't know what all to do, where and when, all the vital points were all occupied. So I had to stand behind. Swami went up, Swami retired, went up the staircase and the bedroom door was latched. All boys slowly went back to hostel. I was still in the staircase room, now no longer able to control the feelings. So I was crying, silently crying in a sense. Wonderful opportunity I lost. Why is it happening like this? And suddenly I hear from top the latch open, upstairs, and loving voice, Swami used to say, Ay. If Swami wants to call somebody, A he used to say. So A voice I heard. And by the time what had happened, the room boys who normally are at the staircase all the time, they had gone, they had also retired, thinking Swami has retired. So no one was there. So I didn't know what to do, I ran up. I ran up and Swami opened his bedroom door, took out his kerchief, gave the kerchief to me and he said, this towel, Swami used to call kerchief as towel once in a while, right? He said, this towel, I brought it from hostel, give it back. I was, means at that time especially, Swami as he aged became more and more of motherly nature. At that time he was more of Gambhira. The face was chubby cheeks and lot of hair, right? If you go close to Swami, it used to, I used to fear at least. So I didn't say anything, I just took the kerchief and was turned back to get down. And again Swami said, hey. I looked around, Swami said, today is your birthday, no? Chase, chesko, chesko means take namaskar. That is Bhagwan. What to explain of his love for all, all of us? how he responds and how he knows when to respond and how he, for him there was nothing like something is not worthy of offering to him. He wanted, he is to in fact imagining the Lord of the Lords coming to all of us, especially in the hostel, he is to tell very often, have a relationship with me. He used to almost besiege all of us, have a relationship with me. In fact, if you read the, the epochal discourse in 48th birthday, Bhagwan's discourse, Swami says emphatically, have a relationship with me in your heart and you will definitely benefit from that. And Swami really was telling us and is continuing to tell us that same thing, that we need to love him. We need to have him as our everything. And he used to besiege, have a relationship. So much so, nothing used to be an obstacle for having that relationship. All kinds of being youngsters, we used to have all kinds of thoughts going across our mind. I'll narrate a beautiful experience of how, how he converted even a deficiency that we had into an opportunity to teach into an opportunity to connect. This happened when again I was in my twelfth, going through different kinds of thoughts. So didn't want to face Swami. I wanted to have darshan, but didn't want Swami to see me. So used to stand somewhere in Vrindavan, used to stand. And Swami, one morning session, he was sitting in the bhajan hall. We all used to be standing at the back. And suddenly Swami looked and said, Etlaun Naura, how are you? I said, Swami, fine. Because that's our immediate answer. Then Swami said, no, no, no. Bumps and jumps, bumps and jumps. This was the constant. Earlier, he used to very often use this phrase to convey that you are not stable. Mind is not stable. So now having known that Swami knows everything, I said, yes, Swami. Then Swami said, Swami used to have pan. He was beautiful then, used to have pan and he took out his kerchief from the chair and he wiped, he showed the kerchief 
and he said your mind is as pure as this white kerchief imagine what confidence it gives to a youngster who is going through who is almost in a self negation mode and sami tells tells me your mind is as pure as this white kerchief i was thrilled i moved forward little more confident now knowing fully well that i am not going to be reprimanded but certainly going to be means sami is talking nicely so went ahead sami said then sami wiped his lips and marks had come then sami said now see what has happened two marks have come why did they come because i have used them i have used the kerchief marks have come you are using your mind that is why some dirt has come so what do you next very next question was wonderful he said what do you do to wash your kerchief wash your clothes you give it to dhobi i am your dhobi i am your dhobi give it to me give your mind to me i am your dhobi imagine this is actually when i was narrating this in my, in the awareness classes pg awareness classes later on much later in 2000s when i was a faculty mr ashwi sv giri sir who was the then vice chancellor was also attending the awareness class and he said you know anil what has happened this is actually bhag essence of bhagavad gita taught to you in a different way because what does krishna tell arjuna arjuna was also in a vishad mode in a self dejection mode and what does krishna do to arjuna what he tells him mam anusmara yudhya cha mam anusmara think of me mam eva mana eva mana adhistva mai buddhim niveshayah nivashishyasi mai eva atha urdhvam na samsayah that is what krishna tells arjuna live in me think of me do everything for me i will take you to liberation and this is what swami in a, in his own inimitable loving kind way conveyed in such a wonderful way through just a example of a kerchief and he said i am your dhobi give your mind to me so that was the love that was the concern that was the way he used to connect no blemish no limitation of ours is ever a limitation for him nothing whatsoever is in fact during the same period again another experience is coming to my mind this again happened in the same staircase room you know we used to go through various phases of swami interacting with all of us sometimes we used to be in form sort of a thing I means swami used to talk very often sometimes swami used to not not talk ignore sort of a thing so we used to go through a lot of mental turmoil a, a lot of uh, thinking of what where we are going wrong and in one such period of treatment i was in the staircase room and some package had come and packages had this plastic wrappers around them i don't know what went in my mind i was thinking if this there is something separating me from swami and i should tear it out and i was thinking like that and just blindly tearing the plastic sheet out and suddenly i see swami right behind me standing right we had come down the staircase he was standing right behind me and he said nothing is separating you from me nothing is separating you from me like this instances which are innumerable okay, how can i really narrate which are so innumerable number of experiences every thought every he is to not miss an opportunity i am sure this is, has happened for each and every one of us it is just that we have not captured it some we have captured some we haven't captured but then it is it is that he is even now in that sense conveying this same truth that we are his in fact this very my coming on march 20th itself is an experience for me that he is still listening to every prayer of of mine 
about a month back i did satcharit parayana then also just to with no intention as especially but just to connect have that connection again strong enough followed by ganapati tarvash in shesha parayana i just did this and then two days after that i get a call from kalyan saying that sir would you are you okay to come for samarpan so who has organized this who has made it happen it is him it is he alone who makes us do an activity and response to that activity it is he alone so i was praying to the to swami what exactly should should i speak about lord there are so many but what should i really touch upon then swami only one message constantly came to my mind which i'll come to towards the later part of my talk i don't want to tell it right away but only one thought kept on coming in my mind during shivaratri when i had been to patti i was praying what should i say swami what should i say and i think the message what i have got is a phenomenal message for all of us which i'll tell as a go long but then this has been the experience that he listens that he is the one who is the indweller he is the one who is constantly aware of every thought of ours another profound experience which i would bring to your notice happened during my first year degree that was 1981 82 time around that time the summer of 81 prindan boys had gone to parthi few of us about 15 of us were there and that was the time when college building construction hostel building construction in patti was on so swami used to take rounds in a, in the car very often so bhajans used to go on from 11:30 till swami returns so whatever time it used to so it was a long whole day we used to be spending in mandir because bhajans were from 11 to 11:30 in the morning evening was 6 to 6:30 so morning 6 onwards we were at mandir so that was a wonderful life and it so happened that being a small group who had come from brindavan swami also blessed us with a wonderful opportunity of calling us in once in a while after evening bhajans after swami used to finish his dinner before he used to go up he used to call us all inside and just spend some time talking to brindavan boys and one such the uh, thing uh, day swami said bhajagovindam the whole theme was was in bhajagovindam and swami narrated beautifully how bhajans have to be done he said bhajans when you when you are doing bhajans you should think of the meaning of the word and couple of them which swami explained are so so wonderful and have got so stuck in my mind that they are really phenomenal for example swami said gopala what should you think when you say gopala then swami narrated that when a cow gives birth to the calf it licks all the dirt from the calf all by herself and then sami said if one go one cow can remove so much dust dirt from its own child how much more can gopala do how much more loving is gopala all your negativity he will remove that kind of thought you need to have when you say the word gopala when you say om namah shivaya you should feel that all the negative duality is being thrown out of you so swami explained like this the following day i thought i should sincerely follow this message of bhagwan during bhajans so next day morning bhajan session and because we were very few and we were sitting on the portico the area where now part of the it is samadhi and the portico area where we used to sit we were sitting quite far away because there was not many people there so we were bhajans were on and swami had got into the car and left for seeing the construction and other places possibly i was closing my eyes and once swami left in the car 
closed my eyes and started doing bhajans very sincerely. And it so happened as I was singing and thinking of the words and their meaning and really enjoying myself, I was able to see Swami when my eyes were closed. Means in the mind's eye, and there was one pose of Swami which was my favorite pose, even now. He used to, Swami used to come out during those times, during evening bhajans. Sands were there. He used to come to the end of the portico, cup his hands behind like this, and sway to the bhajans. Imagine that sight. I can tell you, I don't know how to explain it. And so much bushy hair, black hair, orange robe, red lips, beautiful form, swaying like this to the birds chirruping on one side, bhajans going on. How do we describe this scene? And so I was actually, that's, that's a form of Swami standing like this, which I really, somehow I am deeply attached to. So as I was doing bhajans, this was the form which was in my mind's eye. And bhajans were on. Suddenly, after a while, I felt something was happening in front of me and then there was a tap on my head. I opened my eyes. You will not believe. Right in front of me, Swami was standing exactly in the same pose. Hands cupped behind, swaying and looking at me like this. And then he said, Inside Swami, outside Swami, one and the same. This, this is Bhagwan. This is Bhagwan, and this is the bonus or the bonanza period that all of us have been blessed with. We, used to, we are not great rishis and tapasvis who do enormous penance, but every small act of goodness, every small act of sadhana is to respond. To give us that confidence that no act of sadhana is ever wasted. This is the truth. In fact, this is the truth that all of us have to understand that no act of sadhana is ever wasted. Because nowadays, we are all used to instant responses. We do, even the examinations have become online. We write the answer and the result is in front of us. That's the status right now we are used to. In spirituality, what happens to all of us is we don't see instant reaction, instant growth and therefore we feel dejected. Therefore we feel, why should we do this? And I think that's where Swami gives us a beautiful, His experiences, if we ruminate, recollect and live and contemplate, I think what comes out constantly is that no, no prayer, forget even sadhana, no prayer also is wasted prayer. When he responds, how he responds is his choice. Like the very first experience I told you, he, he preferred to respond at the end of the day, in the night. That was his choice. But he knows that is the best way to respond. Because of all the birthdays, I remember only that. That's the only birthday blessing that I really remembered of all the 30 years that I've lived there. So that's the, that's the kind of so he responds, he responds every, every small act. Another example I'll give you. This was during 1990, 1990 November, I got my PhD degree. 1991 June, I joined as a faculty. So 90 November to June 91, I was a free bird in that sense. Means no restrictions of hostel or college or any of them on me. So wherever Swami used to travel, I used to travel. I was a free then. So Swami went to Brindavan. I also went to Brindavan post-November birthday. So being free, nothing to do. One day I just thought, let me spend the whole day taking Swami's name. Namasmarana is so, so many times Swami tells, why not I do it continuously, really continuously. And sincere effort I, have put, I had put, don't know how well I have done. I am not, I can't assess it myself. But then in the evening, a wonderful experience happened. Swami had come out of, I was standing at the gate of Trai Vrindavan and Swami had come out of the Trai Vrindavan door. And as he came out, there was the then Director General of 
border security force. He was standing right at the entrance. The Swami got down the steps and he gave a big bouquet full of rose, roses to Bhagwan. Bhagwan blessed him. And normally what you would have expected, this big bunch of roses, you would have expected that Swami would give it to warden sir or somebody to keep it inside. Swami was carrying that and walking down the whole darshan. Boys were all seated. Swami was walking down. I was at the end of Trai Vrindavan compound. And Swami came up to me, gave that bunch of roses in my hands and smiled and walked off. I knew why this had happened. So again an experience of a small effort and an instant response. An instant response of, I know what you have done and I am happy for what you have done. This, this is Bhagwan, really. This is, was, is and will ever be our dear Lord. How can we really explain that love that he has for us? In fact, in the Anandavalli, it is said, Raso Vaisaha Rasagguhye Vayam Labdhanandi Bhavati. What it means is, He is the essence, essence which gives us joy. Rasa is not just essence, Rasa is a flavor, flavor that gives us joy. So, he and Rasa and made us go to that next step of the very statement, which is Rasagguhye Vayam Labdhanandi Bhavati. One who gets this essence becomes joyous. And all of us having got that essence of loving Swami, I think are the most fortunate. I think are the ones who can really be most thrilled because the most precious of our belongings, of our whatever we can have is that love for Him and His love for us. And as we go on, in fact, in the same Anandavalli, it is said, Rasagguhye vayam labdhvanandi bhavati kohye vanyar kapranyat esha akasha anando nasyat esha ye vanandayati. So, what it means is the fear. Yadashye vaisha etasmin nadrusye natme nirukte nilene bhayam pratishtam vindate adhaso bhayam gato bhavati yadashye vaisha etasmin nudara mantaram kurute adhatasya bhayam bhavati Fear is defined by Vedamata as a break with that love. When you don't have connect with that essence, that is fear. As long as you are connected with that essence, you are fearless. Fear is defined by the Vedamata as that a loss of that connect with the fear, with the essence, leads to fear. So, if we are able to contemplate and live every moment of our existence knowing that we are His. In fact, this was the only statement that was coming to my mind all along when I was trying to say, praying to Swami, Swami, what should I say? The only message that was coming is, you are mine. All of us are His. I think that is the only truth that we need to remember. In fact, in the Atirudra Mahayagnam, in one of the discourses, Swami emphatically said this, I have created you all for my pleasure. We don't have any other reason for existence. Our only existence is to make Him happy. There's no other reason because He created us for His pleasure. So that is, we are His. I think that is the greatest blessing all of us have had. In fact, in one of the Paduka Puja time, it so happened that Dr. Gadia, I'm sure most of you will be knowing him, was introduced by the speaker before Dr. Gadia, saying that Dr. Gadia is not connected to Bhagawan only during this avatar. He is the one who has seen 
the earlier avatar of swami so and after that dr gadia spoke then swami stood up to bless us all with his divine discourse and in that discourse imagine this was a discourse in the kulvant hall and swami said they introduced dr gadia as saying that he was connected to me in my previous incarnation let me tell you this all of you are connected to me not now but for generations together that is the blessing that we devotees have there is no other greater blessing that we need to ever think of because he has said clearly we are his in fact that famous poem of bhagwan's ananda balude ananda balude tana gumpunakku taralimpa tarali vache he is the only this very same rama came back to find his his people around the very same krishna came back to collect his friends so we are all that same group so that is the greatest blessing what are the blessing can we really ask of when we have such a loving god and that we are we all belong to him i think the only 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 purpose of our existence and the only joy that we can have is to love love and love him all the while another experience this happened when i was in the uh, phd time 1990 how he protects how he takes care of every every minutest of our activities 1990 during the research i was doing my research then almost to the finishing time in the institute we have state of the art equipment all of you know this satyasai institute is one of the premium institutes with respect to even the secular studies that happen there apart from the value based training and so we had all the equipment that is needed for chemistry i am talking about chemistry department so we used to run it we used to manage it all by ourselves in fact to tell you bhagwan whenever there was any visitor till super speciality hospital came the show piece of bhagwan's institution and show piece of bhagwan's whole interaction was the institute and even in the institute it was the chemistry department because firstly it was in the ground floor second our instrumentation department was one of the top class so every vip who comes swami used to come along with him bring him to the instrumentation room and show this is my institute right so he was that kind of instruments we had and we used to manage them and we used to use them for our work and there were couple of instruments which needed gases like helium zero air the chn analyzer required oxygen hydrogen and at that time the only way to get them was from bangalore so these were big cylinders so every time they get over we used to take a van go to bangalore go to ioc and get the refill cylinders so it was during research time so i had to i was using the equipment instrument so we took those cylinders myself and dr sundareshan sir who is a faculty in brindavan even now so both of us left to bangalore for getting the gases we had gone we gave the empty cylinders got the filled cylinders they were all lying at the back of the matador van and being from the means we were using lot of diethyl ether being from the chemistry department we thought having gone to bangalore why not pick up some solvents too so these solvents were all highly inflammable solvents but we had very little concern of safety at that point of time we picked up all these bottles put them at the back along with the cylinders got into the matador van and st- started back around 7 7:30 from bangalore as we were reaching chikbalapur i was lying down at the back seat sleeping suddenly i find the van started toppling three four t- five times it toppled and landed about three or four uh, um, maybe uh, 300 400 feet away from the road on one side of it 
the matador was the windshield as had opened up as though it was a door lights were focusing into the sky and nothing happened to three of us the cylinders were on me they had both sundareshan and driver came and picked up the cylinders i i got up and to my surprise under Do- dr sundareshan sir a, the photograph which was on the dashboard had fallen we got up and came out nothing had happened so bad except that i couldn't stand erect and we see on the road uh, two cars are parked and it was raining drizzling little and people came out of those cars came running to us and they said is there anyone else in the van the way the van was going we are certain there will be dead bodies and mind you not a single filled cylinder broke not a single bottle these are just normal amber colored bottle not a single solvent bottle broke even if one bottle was breaking which is 500 ml bottle it would have been enough to put the whole van in flames nothing happened nothing whatsoever and as we came out these these were kashmiri shopkeepers who are outside in parthi they came running picked us up took us to their car and they said we knew this van was from puttaparthi and we had stopped on the way for tea so at that time they they saw us they knew we were from puttaparthi but be, they were in car and we were in matador van they could have easily overtaken us but then those kashmiri shopkeepers were telling me allah ne mer humko kaan mein bol raha tha my english hindi is not so good so pardon me that we should not overtake so we were following you we could have overtaken you but allah was telling us not to overtake so we were following you now we know why he was telling us not to overtake right so then we got into the car came to parthi it was late in the night around 11:30 12 i was directly taken to the general hospital for whatever little treatment next morning we were sitting in mandir for darshan and swami came down swami was at that time still staying in the prashanti mandir he had still not shifted to purna chandra swami came down went for darshan didn't look at us we both were actually dr sundarshan sir and myself we were sitting in the front row to thank bhagwan swami just didn't look at us went straight for lady side darshan finished the darshan gent side darshan also got over surprisingly nobody was called for interview so we were thinking something is going to happen but not very sure swami came back went straight walked into interview room ignored again both of us so we were sitting there wondering how to tell swami thanks to bhagwan then after a while the interview room door opened and swami summoned both of us come so as we are going in swami called the then vice chancellor saraf saraf sir sn saraf sir he called him in and as he closed the door he told him tell your vice chancellor what happened last night so we started narrating as we narrated and completed bhagwan said wrong we didn't narrate properly so both my sir and sundarshan sir were shocked what did we miss we narrated everything how we got into the van at bangalore and how the van toppled and nothing broke how swami gave us a second life all that we said swami said wrong then swami said hey you were sitting in the front seat when you started at bangalore when you stopped for tea you went to back seat sundarshan went to front seat is it not yes swami you missed that <laughs> and then where am i ra where am i that standard swami's way of saying where am i and then swami patted and he said yes i have given you second life but buddhi le do immediately swami is to invariably make it a point one side protection other side correction that was the lord immediately he said buddhi le do kavvekua kavvekua in telugu means too much of um, ego ahankaram kavvekua We, so we were wondering what happened now now what is this for then sami said you have booked the van 
the driver has come is it enough when you sit there next to him if he is driving fast it is your duty to tell him to drive slow just booking a taxi is not the end of your responsibility you have to tell him to go slow if he is going fast buddhi le do right so a beautiful message for all of us even in that way see that was the every small occasion how practical we need to be how spiritually we will grow were both combined in a very very natural way there was no big fanfare about the way he is to join the two aspects of life like once swami asked do you want to be spiritual this happened in one of the family interviews do you want to be spiritual i at that time we had this feeling of spiru spiru means not very great means very being completely withdrawn so i said no swami then swami said having come to me you are spiritual living with me you are spiritual this is spirituality what is spirituality swami said so this the way he used to teach was means that there was no nothing that we used to answer was a negative answer for bhagwan there was no nothing as a thing to be reprimanded everything is to take it so lovingly so kindly in fact 20th of march i just remembered was the 20th march 2011 was the last day of bhagwan's darshan and in fact on that day swami gave laddus lots of laddu prasad to so many boys he was calling he called me to summon me once i didn't because lots of school boys were sitting in front of me i didn't get up second time and a third time he summoned that's when i got up and went he gave the laddu prasad on 20th march 2011 so this is a day again if i really ruminate now it is his will that i am standing here sharing these experiences with you he would have willed it then itself that this should happen and because this has to happen he made me do some sadhana and as a effect of that sadhana he has made you call so it's all i think the way you the way swami leads us on is to make him a part of our life and slowly from there he led us on to a very very important truth and that truth is that we are not the doers i'll give you a beautiful experience for this this was during the vedam time 2003 2007 during this four years period there was no set vedam pattern means in the sense the suktas were not monday has to be this sukta tuesday has to be this sukta there was no rule swami used to come and sit and we used to i used to have a list of suktas that we knew printed on a paper i used to show to mr vedner and sir what should be the next suktam or the mantram that we'll pick up and how i used to decide was seeing bhagwan's mood mood in the sense whether there are too many vips around whether sami is free enough to sit for a while what kind of surroundings are there and on this spot i used to decide what should be the next mantram so this is how we used to chant and if swami used to come and sit for our because that was the beginning of vedam swami wanted to encourage vedam so hours together is to just sit and keep listening so we used to go from one mantra to another mantra without any set pattern all on the spot decisions and i was like a vedam dj in a sense right so feeling very proud about it in fact once it so happened swami had come onto the stage swami was sitting there the private school children also had come and you know swami loves primary school children also to chant but at that point of time they knew very few mantras so beautifully what we had done on this spot was one mantram which they knew we used to chant very next time i used to choose a mantram which they did not know and third mantram will be something that they knew so they, their involvement was also there therefore swami was also say, our only intention was swami should sit on the stage and listen to vedam as long as possible that thing else was our intention so we were playing around like this end of that session swami sat for a long time swami was damn happy chanted along with us in some of the mantras and then swami went in and all the vedam boys started saying 
Wonderful selection, sir. You, the way you managed is phenomenal. So slowly that ego is coming in. Yeah, I am phenomenal. You see, I, I know what I am doing. Sort of a thought was coming in. And following day, I used to have lunch in the North Indian canteen at that point of time. Following day, I had gone for lunch. And as I was standing in the line, see how beautifully Swami teaches. I was standing in the line for lunch. There was a father and a son standing behind me. And the son was telling father, Father, I am thrilled today. Yeah, phenomenally, I am just ha so happy today. Father said, what, what happened? What was your experience? He said, Father, I knew only one mantram, Medha Suktam. And I was praying to Swami, Swami, next mantram has to be Medha Suktam. And Swami made it Medha Suktam. Then suddenly it was like a, means he was telling I only overheard. But it was like a shock to me that he is making my hand move. He is listening to the prayers of everyone and acting through me. I am not acting. So that is the status which he takes us through. In a very loving way. He didn't tell directly. He made it just happen. This is the beauty of his the, his experiences, beauty is so, so wonderful, so, so magnanimous and beautiful that things fall in place to convey a message. Another beautiful experience I right now remember, this is the experience of uh, Dr. KBR Prasad sir. You must, most of you would have seen him. He puts the mic in front of Bhagwan. He used to put the mic. Even now he takes care of the mics there. He was telling me this when this was in early 70s when he was at Indian Institute of Science as a professor there. He was also the convener of Karnataka State Samiti at that point of time. So he used to walk behind Bhagwan whenever Bhagwan had come to Brindavan. So it seems it so happened that Swami had finished the Sai Ram Shad Darshan, went back into the old bungalow and looked at KBR Prasad sir and said, see an old lady supported and being led by a young lady will come will be in the crowd get them inside their VIPs now before he could take any further instruction Swami went in this man was in shivers now who there will be so many old lady being led by young ladies now who is a VIP who is this old lady being led by a young lady who is going to, who are VIPs and they have to be brought inside, inside the bungalow there. So he was wondering like this, any case Swami's order, so he started, because all devotees were going back, there was a crowd, so he started walking back from the mandir, crossed the hostel, crossed Saraswati statue, he was reaching the gate, he was thinking I'll stand at the gate and keep watching. Who is going? Suddenly he finds a boy, come, a student, comes running to him, tells, Sir, Swami has told that right now as I am telling you, in front of us there will be an old lady being supported by a young lady. Those two have to be brought inside. Right? And those two people were actually the then mother and wife of the then collector of Anantapur. But then see... The boy's running time, their walking time, his walking time, everything is in his control. Really, do we, do we feel that we are doing something? Really, the more we, I start thinking about this, the more we tend to feel, what are we doing? Where are we the doers, in fact? In fact, if you see the holy man and psychiatrist uh, book towards the end, there's a beautiful conversation that... Uh, Samuel Sandvis has written, probably he writes it as Swami and devotee, probably it is with him, wherein Swami told him, it tells the devotee, there are three types of devotees who come to me. One who is, who is only after my physical presence, who craves for my physical presence and all the time is running after my physical presence, physical body. The second is one who knows I am everywhere, but he still wants a physical interaction. And a third, who is, are the type of devotees who feel me, live with me all the time, they are not bothered about the physical body. And then Swami goes on to say, 
it is not for you to decide into which category you should belong to then this devotee asks you can read it it is there in holy man and psychiatrist then what am i supposed to do swami as a devotee what am i supposed if i don't have a choice of which devotee i should be category i should belong to what am i supposed to do swami says why do you think you are doing that is your mistake that is your mistake so i think that is the path that he leads us on he starts with a relationship and he lovingly leads us on to a realization that he alone is the doer and not us more any number of experiences we take this is the thread that we see all along in fact he is so loving if you really sit back and think as i was thinking about this talk just flashed last evening why is it that swami started atirudra mahayagnam in 2006 is it not lord could have started this atirudra mahayagnam at his 50th birthday when he announced why at 2006 that i suddenly realized is actually his love for all of us the reason is lingam if you see in hon swami's discourses swami has said is the closest form that which connects nirakara with sakara it does not have a beginning nor an end it is a the only form which is closest to nirakara as he was moving to nirakara tatva from sakara he got us also to get used to this nirakara tatva that is the reason why 2000 it is it was a message to all of us in fact rudram the rudram the ritual that is done for lingam is what while chanting rudram we do abhishekam both of them have got deep significance rudram if you see all along the rudram there is no description of any form my obeisance to the one who is in the clouds the my obeisance is to the one who is the thief among thieves my obeisance is to the one who eats the meat my obeisance is to the one who is there in the leaves my obeisance is to the one who is the a very lightning my obeisance to the one who is red in color who is blue in color who is yellow in color it goes on so where is the form described there if you really see the meaning all along it is just that the formless the formless and the formless and what do we do abhishekam with water if you really see in vedam there is no word for prema when prema is the essence when love is the essence of all our existence and spirituality why is veda mata never speaking about love so when i started going trying to go deeper into this question i realized aapas water is another word for love why in garga bhagavatam Radha and Krishna were walking along there's a beautiful instance where Krishna explains to Radha Radha and Krishna were walking along the Govardhana hill cross the Govardhana hill as they go to Rohitachala they find one rishi by name Rubhu Maharishi Rubhu Rishi who was standing on one feet and contemplating on Radha and Krishna so Krishna says i have brought you here for this purpose see what happens so as both of them go and stand in front of this rubhu rishi this rubhu rishi is described in garga bhagavatam as one who has the maximum amount of love for radha krishna he is full of love for krishna so as they stand in front of this rishi rishi opens his eyes and sees lord along with radha there he is thrilled thrilled beyond any description starts praising and starts various in, uh, mantras on the lord and slowly disappears and becomes water starts flowing there radha asks what is this krishna what has happened to rubhu rishi 
then krishna says out of his intense love for me he has become a river so water is a significance of love that's why in shiva all he, shiva loves only abhishekam and what he loves abhishekam is only water it is a way of saying i love you swami that's all is abhishekam all about water is only a physical ex- example or a indication or a object to convey that we love swami shiva that is why anbe shivam shivam uh, shivam anbe they say right shiva is love and he loves only that love to be given back to him nothing else in fact this very same thing as we i was going through further i realized whole of month every puja every ritual in hindu tradition whether it be yagna yaga daily puja ends with mantra pushpam and what is mantra pushpam? and swami used to make us chant this mantra pushpam which is one of the simplest of mantras many times swami was never tired of listening to this mantra yo pam pushpam veda pushpavan prajavan pashuman bhavati chandrama va apam pushpam pushpavan prajavan pashuman bhavati what does it mean if you realize that everything has come out of water you become the all knowing you become the one who is the most prosperous you become the one who is the most successful what does it mean from water sun comes from water agni vayu sun moon nakshatra parjanya samvatsara right all of these in in that in that order all of them if you realize that they have come from water that their source is water you realize that everything you are the greatest in this world what does it mean that the source of every one whether it is the sun the moon the agni or the vayu it is their love for god which is their source in fact the very same anandavalli says bhishat smadvat pavate bhisho deti surya भीषात्स्मादग्निश्चेन्द्रश्चात् मृत्युर्धावति पञ्चम इति आउट ऑफ फियर द सन राइजेस इन द ईस्ट आउट ऑफ फियर द विंड ब्लोस दैट्स हाउ इट इज ट्रांसलेटेड बट इफ यू कनेक्ट इट टू द वेरी अर्लियर स्टैंडा व्हिच आई टोल्ड यू व्हाट इज फियर वेदमाता डिस्क्राइब्स फियर एज व्हाट स्टेइंग अवे फ्रॉम दैट कनेक्शन सो दे आर दैट मींस व्हाट सन इज अफ्रेड that his contact with swami might go and therefore he continues to work moon is afraid that his contact of love with swami might go therefore he is working stars are shining because they want to love god continuously wind is blowing fire is burning because of their love for swami it is this love which keeps the universe so therefore mantra pushpam therefore means it is this love that makes the universe run and that is the small fragment of that love we have understood having come to swami i think that's why that message you are mine is a phenomenal message because through this relationship with bhagwan which all of us were fortunate to come and have for us god is not someone who is a judgment person sitting on a throne for us god is someone whom we can relate to whom we can talk to whom we can love and who whom we know loves us so this fragment of love that we have got is the essence of very existence of this universe that's what vedamata tells and that is out of his love he took us from this sakara love to the nirakara love by starting aturudram in fact in 1999 that was the last interview as a family we had got swami as he was opening so closing the interview room door we were only two families inside for the first time till that time i remember all along my brindavan days swami used to say meditate on this form and he used to describe his form beautiful soft feet silken robe orange robe over that and a face with in fact swami used to describe the two eyebrows meeting together right red lips 
lot of hair, black hair. He used to describe and he used to say, this is the form that you should meditate upon. And such a Swami, on that day in 1999, he closed the interview room door, turned round to all of us and said, how long do you want to be after this body? We were shocked, shell-shocked, you will not believe. Interview room door, 1999, this was not anywhere close to 2011. Swami said, how long do you want to run after this body? Unseen Swami is more powerful than seen Swami. And the whole talk in that interview room, do, interview room was, unseen is more powerful than seen. And Swami gave lots of examples which all of us know, the tree has the unseen roots, the building has the unseen foundation and so on, Swami went on. And so we took that opportunity to say, Swami, how do we connect to this unseen? And we expected some profound message coming in, especially to us, right? Then Swami said, right from the time I started talking to everyone, what is my message? Love. Love is the one which connects you to the unseen. And believe me, I came out of that interview, interview, interview and thought, what a simple answer Swami has given. Is it really true? That's all, is it? Then as I was ruminating more and more on this message, I realized, yes, it is the love which connected Gopikas with Krishna. They could see, feel, hear Him anywhere. Meera, who had not seen Krishna at all physically, could connect with Him, whether it is Meera or Tukaram or any sage. It was because of the love that they connected to the unseen. So love is the link for us to connect with the unseen. And that is the, therefore, knowing that, holding on to this relationship, wonderful relationship that he has blessed us all with, knowing that he is the doer, we have to reach to that stage, constantly reminding ourselves that we aren't the doers, and fully knowing that we are his and only his. I think these are the three steps or the journey that I have gone through in all these years with Bhagwan, There are so many experiences, all of which are in these three. If you really look at what Swami was conveying and making us grow towards, are these three paths, or this, this single path towards, towards Him. The more we give Him attention, the more we used to get an opportunity. This was another beautiful pattern as to see dear Bhagwan. When we sacrifice something and go to Swami, the response from Swami used to be instantaneous. Means, suppose there was something that at hostel, it was not the darshan time, right? We could be at hostel, relax, but then we leave that and go to, for darshan, invariably Swami used to speak at that time. Conveying, like for example, this was again the same message, it was the birthday time, the silver around the Swami's um, altar in the bhajan hall was being polished. So all the photographs were taken out, idol was taken out, all were spread across the bhajan hall, nobody was allowed inside and this silver polishing was going on and the big Swami's that photograph in Patti bhajan hall was on the side on one wall. Being a student I could go in, so I went in and I was looking around at what is happening. That was not darshan time. And suddenly, Swami comes down, came into the bhajan hall. And he saw what was happening. He gave instructions to the silver, uh, how it should be polished to the goldsmith. Then I was the only one standing there. And I was standing right next to Swami's life-size portrait. And Swami comes in front of me. And he asks me, who is there in that portrait? <laughs> so what do I say? Again, he wants to convey a message. He said, Swami, 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 what is, what is he to you? What is he to you? Again, conveying the relationship concept. So I was, I was trying to, mother, I was about to say, Swami said, 
you and he are one and walked off so if such simple but such instances where every time we used to leave aside any of the activities and move to him he used to come round and give us an opportunity and interact with us so if there's a there's a lesson in that for all of us even now i feel if we keep aside our distractions and close our eyes and contact him he will respond so it is i think the message is you move you sacrifice something and divert your attention to me i am there to respond to you this was consistently happened all along my student life when and wherever i missed means didn't stay back but pushed myself and went for additional darshan or additional running around i was always benefited so is the case with every student every student every devotee when we take that extra step he is to invariably respond and give that benediction another beautiful instance was this happened in the 1982 i think again to tell you all how swami conveyed that he is the doer and if you believe in him and stick to him he will take care of everything every i remember as i was in fact i was just jotting down the instances i realized every major examination swami is to come and have a function in the hostel imagine 12th standard examination we had next day mathematics and we had swami visiting hostel the night before next day is the 12th standard final exam i remember this very well because immediately after that we sat in that basement rooms and did group studies to pick up whatever right first year degree final exams were coming swami gave all the hyderabad boys permission to be part of his hyderabad visit so all of us went along with bhagwan came back just on the day before examination for writing the final exams second year degree swami came to brindavan as the final exams were on and he went i remember just the day before chemistry exam swami went to chennai came back late in the night because of the flight delay next day was chemistry exam and chemistry was my weakest subject i'll come to it now a very very important message there was my weakest of the three subjects i was absolutely comfortable with maths chemistry was my weakest subject and in fact my second year degree i should say bhagwan helped me to pass in a sense that night when i slept for few hours swami came in my dream he was on the board and i was sitting in the classroom and i remember swami taught me gabriel thalamite synthesis which came next day in the examination so like this he guided and chemistry was a nightmare but after bsc when we were asking for what i should be taking for msc swami said take chemistry <laughs> so it was such a nightmare you will not believe i joined msc i was struggling then one month down the line swami gave interview i said i caught hold of swami's hands cried out i said swami you tell me to do anything else i'll do but not msc chemistry i want to discontinue i will stop now i don't want to continue because nothing is getting into my head please swami swami said acha 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 then again started talking to other devotees then finally as he started giving vibhuti before coming out of the interview room that time i said swami i will not continue with chemistry even if i lose one year i don't care but i am not going to do this then i think that was a turning point he looked at me maybe for a second deep into my eyes i don't know what he did he said do it as my worship do it as my worship and you will not believe from then on the way i am underst- even to this day the way i am understanding chemistry i know it is not me who is doing it 
for whatever reasons, what he has done at that point of time and the only message that I take is, it is his worship. And it just turned around that I started understanding every bit of the subject which was all Greek and Latin to me. So that is the Lord. He can make us do, in fact, this was a consistent thing. Whatever we are weak in, he is to make us do exactly that, to give us that confidence. Whatever we left out, that he will make us look at. In fact, even the appointment to the, as a lecturer in the college was, I had done during Brindavan time almost all kinds of um, self-reliance activities, whether it was garden, gokulam, all kinds, except kitchen. And that was one department which I never touched. And I was told when I was being, the registrar calls me into his room, gives me appointment letter for, as a lecturer and tells me, you are being appointed as a lecturer in the institute so that you can go and take care of the hostel mess. This is Swami's instruction. So, the one activity which I left out, I was asked to go and take part in that. So that's the way he taught every one of us. This is not only my story. Is every one of us he taught like this, giving us confidence where we were feeling we are weak, he is to convert it into a confidence. Because finally, when he is there with us, nothing is a challenge for us. So this is the wonderful story of his love for us that we have lived through, we will continue to live through. And that's where I would like to end with two beautiful stanzas which Kulshekar Alwar says in Mukundamala. He says, Mad janmanaha phalamidam madukaita bhare mad prarthaniya mad anugraha esha eva tvad bhrutya bhrutya paricharaka bhrutya bhrutya bhrutyasya bhrutya itimam smara lokanatha. He says, Lord, I have only one prayer after, as a fruit of my activities for this life and that is, please think of me, smara, please think of me. You may think of me as the servants, servants, you are servant, 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 seventh generation servant, doesn't matter, but think of me, right? And the second prayer he says is, mukunda murdha pranapatya yache bhavanta mekanta miyasamardham avismruti tvat charanara vindhe bhave bhave mestu bhavat prasadat oh mukunda give me one blessing that i will never forget your feet so i should not forget you and you should think of me means i should think of you and you should think of me this is the only prayer that i have bhagwan that you should keep us allow us to love you Thank you all for giving me this wonderful opportunity. <laughs>